my uh, last video, I showed how uh, ferrites can be nonlinear and cause the generation of harmonics. And uh, then while using my NFED half-wave antenna on 40 meters, I measured the uh, harmonics on uh, 20 and 15 meters uh, with a receiver with a small antenna. So I uh, proved that the harmonics were there, at least in my mind. And uh, so what I really wanted was for the ARRL labs to make some measurements. And uh, there was a QST article about uh, the Clean Signal Initiative Committee. So what I actually did was contact everyone that was mentioned in that article and uh, to try and get them to see if the ARRL labs would get involved. And uh, these guys were all very helpful. And uh, what I learned though is that the ARRL labs are uh, just very busy right now with uh, a lot of projects. And although they might be interested in it, uh, they couldn't get to it for quite some time. So uh, a couple of them suggested that I do it. <laughs> and uh, actually gave me some uh, helpful ideas of how to go about it. So uh, what they suggested was uh, to first make sure that the harmonics that I were measuring were not from the uh, transmitter itself, uh, which sounds like a good idea. So what I did was construct a uh, dummy load uh, so that I could run my transceiver into this. And I've got a tap in here at the minus 40 dB level uh, so that I can feed this to a spectrum analyzer. Uh, which I also bought. This is a tiny spectrum analyzer, and there's a lot of videos about these on the uh, on YouTube. So at that point, I was at that point I was prepared to uh, to measure uh, the output of my uh, transceiver for any harmonics that might be there. Then, uh, by by the way, this uh, the FCC rule that you must be 43 dB down from the fundamental power. Uh, for those not familiar with dB, 43 dB is a factor of 20,000 times. So uh, also I found that there's another rule that between 30 megahertz and 225 megahertz, you have to be 60 dB down from the fundamental. And that turns out to be a ratio of a million to one. So any harmonics have to be a million times smaller than your fundamental those frequencies. So uh, at any rate, another suggestion was just like I would use this dummy load uh, to measure the output of my transceiver, I should make a dummy load uh, for the NFED half-wave uh, transformer. And uh, so it's kind of crude, but that's what I have here. It's a series of resistors to equal the uh, 2350 ohm impedance, output impedance, of our NFED half-wave transformer. And then I have a, a half-ohm sensing resistor that I can then feed out, feed out to the uh, spectrum analyzer. And I also have a thermocouple, that's what this wire is, on the uh, core of the uh, transformer. So in order to conduct my experiment, then I also made a Faraday cage uh, to put that uh, gobbled up thing into. So. Uh, uh, that's the plan, is to measure the trans any harmonics from the transmitter itself and then go to the harmonics uh, generated by the transformer itself. So uh, we'll see what happens. Here is the uh, schematic diagrams for uh, both of my dummy loads. Uh, in the uh, one for measuring the output of the uh, transmitter, I have four 50 ohm 100 watt all my TH, C, TCH series resistors. And then I have a, a shunt here of uh, two one ohm half watt resistors in parallel. And then going to a 47 ohm resistor to, uh, to the BNC connector, which goes then out to the uh, tiny spectrum analyzer. And uh, the purpose of that resistor is to give us roughly a 50 ohm output impedance. So, uh, I'll show you what these resistors look like here in a minute. Uh, they're rated at 100 watts if you could keep them at 25 degrees C, uh, which you can't unless you have water cooling or something. Uh, I have a link below to my video on heat sinking uh, where I show that uh, data sheets are, are not, 
exaggerating power capability of uh, any kind of device that's mounted on a heat sink. At any rate, then over here, the uh, dummy load for the uh, infed half-wave transformer consists of 20 470 ohm 3 watt resistors. So there's pairs of them in parallel and then 10 in series. So that gives me a theoretical capability of 60 watts and I only plan to do my testing at 50 watts. So we go through that string, that, that should be uh, 2350 ohms. And then again, we have two one ohm resistors in parallel going through a 47 ohm re uh, resistor to the tiny coax that's going to go to the tiny spectrum analyzer. So that's what I'm working with. And uh, in the, this one here, the resistors are just out here in open space. And I found uh, with the field strength meter that by getting them close together like this, I can minimize the uh, stray field. So that's why they're oriented like this. Now here's the other side of my uh, 50 ohm uh, dummy load. There's the four resistors uh, mounted to the box. And uh, on the back of the box, I have some heat sinks to help dissipate the power. And uh, there's our shunt, the two uh, one ohm half watt resistors. And uh, then we feed everything to a 47 ohm resistor going to the BNC connector. And uh, here's an, an SA adapter uh, to feed the uh, tiny spectrum analyzer. So that's what's inside. Here's our setup to test the uh, harmonic content of the output of uh, the 570 here. Got the uh, antenna output connected to the dummy load and our tap is fed to the uh, tiny spectrum analyzer. And uh, the power is set at 50 watts. I'm going to turn it on. And uh, there's the uh, spectrum. Sometimes I can't get this to focus very well. But you can see uh, the fundamental is the big peak on the left. And then the various peaks to the right are the various uh, harmonics. And uh, here's the actual results. So the second harmonic is 63.5 dB down, and the third harmonic is 60.5 dB down from the fundamental. So this transmitter is well within the uh, FCC requirements. Here's our uh, 49 to 1 transformer with uh, its dummy load resistors in the uh, Faraday cage. And the output of that is uh, going to the tiny spectrum analyzer. And uh, as you can see, uh, there's no harmonics. That's just the uh, 7 megahertz fundamental there. And uh, this would be very embarrassing if there's no harmonics. But uh, we have 50 watts running into it, by the way. And uh, what we're doing is waiting for it to heat up. So we'll see what happens here as we well, there's our temperature right now, and uh, we'll see where things begin to happen. Okay, I think I see the second harmonic uh, starting to rise up there, and some other harmonics are showing themselves out of the noise level. And uh, we'll see the second harmonic peak and when it starts to go back down, that's the point that the SWR is starting to increase and the transmitter actually uh, is putting out less power. Well, here's the results of that test. Our fundamental was at 7 megahertz and it was measuring minus 20 dB. Our second harmonic was at 14 megahertz and it was measuring minus 53 dB. So that's only 33 dB down from the fundamental. And our 21 megahertz harmonic was measuring minus 62 dB. So that's 42 dB down from the fundamental. Now the FCC rule is that any harmonic has to be minus 43 dB below the fundamental. So our second harmonic 
was 10 dB higher than what is allowed. And in absolute magnitude, that's 10 times the uh, level of what it should be. Here we're only off by 1 dB, which is about 26% more than the allowable limit. Well, I think that uh, what I've just shown you demonstrates that when these cores get hot, uh, something happens that they start generating harmonics. And that happens at a temperature way before the uh, Curie temperature. So uh, you got to keep these things cool. And I haven't seen any uh, videos on YouTube about that. Uh, you d definitely don't want to wrap them in tape and put heat shrink around them. Uh, if you put them in a plastic box, uh, that's going to keep heat from escaping a non-ventilated box. A ventilated box may work okay. If you're going to use multiple cores, uh, if it works out electrically, I think they should be spaced so that air can flow between them. And instead of mounting to a surface that way, uh, they should probably be mounted that way so that convection cooling can occur. So uh, when you see your SWR start to change, you've already been spewing out uh, spurious harmonics uh, illegally, according to the FCC rules. And uh, as I demonstrated, uh, the second harmonic was up to 10 times what's allowed uh, by the rules. So uh, how many cores uh, does it take uh, for uh, power? To, to be able to transmit a certain amount of power, it depends a lot on how much cooling can take place. So during a uh, transmission, the temperature is going to be rising. And then when you stop transmitting and are listening or tuning or whatever, the temperature will start to come down. Uh, if the rate of temperature increase exceeds the cooling rate, you're eventually going to rat, rat, ratchet up in temperature. So uh, I did some more tests uh, where I uh, applied the 50 watts for one minute and measured how much uh, the temperature of the core increased uh, starting from 50 degrees C. And uh, then I also measured how long it took to cool a core down from 54 degrees C to 50 degrees C. And uh, I'll show you that data next. Okay, here's the uh, data that I took at a power of 50 watts. And on the various bands, uh, starting from a 50 degree C temperature, I applied 50 watts for one minute and measured what the temperature got to in that one minute. So this is the delta T. It's a difference between 50 degrees C and the one minute temperature. So we can see that uh, the band that had the lowest temperature rise was 80 meters. So that this tells me on every other band, the uh, dissipation of the core is more. So uh, it looks like the core is very lossy at 10 meters uh, compared to 80 meters. And uh, I don't know what the efficiency is on 80 meters, but if we assume that uh, is a or 1.0 point, you know, maybe it's only 80%. But if we assume that's 100%, then uh, 160 meters is only 71% efficient, and 10 meters is only 27% efficient. So on 10 meters, the temperature increases very rapidly compared to in the lower bands. Now, I get measured a cool-down rate uh, from 54 degrees to 50 degrees, it took, uh, well, it was 1.88 degrees per minute. So uh, you can see we're many times more than that. Here we're like 15.5 degrees per minute going up, and we're only going to come down at 1.88 degrees per minute. So uh, we need to be, uh, to allow a cool down period many times the transmission period. So here's some information uh, for people that are not familiar with degrees C on how to do conversions and so forth. So uh, I picked this 50 degrees C uh, to do these temperature rise tests because it's somewhat in the middle between uh, 25 degrees C 
which is kind of normal ambient temperatures, and 70 degrees C, which is the point at which everything breaks down. So 50 degrees C is kind of in the middle there. So it, it was an arbitrary selection, uh, trying to be sort of realistic. Well, that's about it. I certainly hope the uh, ARRL lab uh, eventually has time to look into this matter. And uh, in the meantime, those of you that are uh, using the ferrite cores in this way, uh, please uh, pay attention to your core temperature. As soon as you see your SWR changing uh, when you're transmitting, uh, be sure and stop and uh, let things cool down. Uh, we want to have uh, clean signals and not be uh, polluting our own airwaves.